Good morning to you all. Good morning to Congressman Jeffries, to all the guests here. You know, we do have a special visitor at CCC today. Someone who is a friend of, a friend to Pastor Bernard and a friend to CCC. That is Governor Andrew Cuomo. Now, when, as many of us know, there were 20 children, including beautiful babies, who were slaughtered up in Newtown, Connecticut by a madman with a gun. When that tragedy happened, Governor Cuomo made sure to take action to keep us all safe. And he got the toughest gun laws in the country passed right here in New York State, known as the SAFE Act, which require anyone who wants to buy a gun to subject themselves to a background check because we need people to be investigated before they can get one of these guns. And it limits the magazine clips that certain guns could hold. Now I can tell you as a Brooklyn DA, the SAFE Act has literally saved the lives of many people here in New York City and throughout our state. And it's because of <laughs> Governor Cuomo, who was the first governor to act legislatively after the Newtown massacre. And now many of you also know that communities all over the country, including here in New York, expressed a lack of confidence in our criminal justice system when police officers kill unarmed men. And so Governor Cuomo created a special prosecutor here in New York State. He was the first governor to appoint a special prosecutor to deal with such cases. He did it just by exercising his executive authority. He issued an executive order. And now states are following his lead all around the country. And so he's here today because he's the strongest governor in the nation to fight to raise the minimum wage from $9 an hour to $15 an hour for all jobs, public, private, all over the state. You see, if we raise our minimum wage to $15 an hour, millions of people in our state will benefit and thousands will be lifted out of poverty. And so it's an important initiative. He also is here because he's not gonna wait for the state legislature to start this. He's already started to raise the minimum wage. He's raised the minimum wage by executive order for fast food workers, just like that, for state employees and for state university employees. But there's something else he's here to talk to us about. And that is when we are faced with a beautiful occurrence when we have a baby in our family, or sadly, when one of our relatives is sick or dying, sometimes we have to choose between our family and our jobs. And so Governor Cuomo now has a paid family leave law that he wants to enact because he knows what we here in CCC know, and that is that family matters. And so Governor Cuomo is gonna come here. He's here with our friend, George Gresham of 1199. George, can you please stand? The governor's here to talk to us about his determination to lift the wages of every New Yorker and to make sure that none of us ever have to choose between our family and our jobs. So CCC, can we please give Governor Cuomo a great CCC welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much and good morning. First to uh, the district attorney who has been a friend for many, many years. It's nice when you elect someone to office and they actually do what they said they were going to do, isn't it? He is a star. I've been watching him. He's done great in the job. I see him on TV all the time now. Yeah, I don't, I don't think his future is going to be in continued elected office. I think he's going right to Hollywood, <laughs> District Attorney Thompson. I could see it now. Brooklyn Justice, <laughs> starring Brooklyn District Attorney Ken Thompson, the voice and figure of justice. But he really is doing a great job, and it's a pleasure to be with him. Congressman Jeffries, let's give him a round of applause because he's doing a great job. 
He was in Albany with me. He was in the state legislature, but he moved on up to Washington with all the big shots there in Washington. We, we miss you in the, little, uh, in the minor leagues, but he's doing great, and it's a pleasure to be with him. Uh, with Roxanne Perrode, who is our, my, uh, my colleague now. Uh, thank you, Roxanne. Give her a round of applause. George Gresham from 1199. George and I were having dinner, and we had a little glass of wine one night, and we came up with what we thought was a great idea, that we are going to push these two issues, and we want to really communicate all across the state, and we were going to rent a big recreational vehicle, a big RV, and put signs on it, and we would drive from one end of the state to the other. We've been in that RV for about seven days now. It was one of those ideas that's a good idea for the first 10 seconds and then is a bad idea for the rest of the time. But we're getting the message out. Give him another round of applause, George Gresham. And Reverend Bernard, I cannot uh, tell you how deeply I feel about Reverend Bernard, not just in his capacity as a spiritual leader and a pastor. Uh, but this is a great civic leader. This is a great national leader. This is a man who is there for the entire community. And his presence and his voice uh, is a national treasure, and we're just proud that he's a New Yorker. Reverend, thank you very much for having us here again to join the CC. And to the CCC family, I came to you uh, when I was running for governor in the first place. I asked you for your support. I asked you to remember me in your prayers. And uh, luckily for me, your prayers were heard. And I can't thank you enough for the friendship and the support. Uh, two issues which the district attorney did a very good job summarizing. Uh, the truth is, I don't want to talk about the political environment that's out there now and what's going on politically because I can't figure out what's going on politically, to tell you the truth. So uh, I have no light to shed on that matter. Uh, and if you figure it out, please call me. My number is 518-474-7516. But leaving the politics aside, we have a couple of governmental issues that are on the table right now in uh, the state legislative session. The state legislative session is going to pass the budget in just under one month. That will have most of the legislation in it, and there's two issues that are really pressingly important. Because the truth is, this economy is very, very difficult. What you hear in the politics is who can, who can appeal to the anger that is out there. What they don't talk about is what is the anger, and why is the anger, and how do you resolve the anger, right? Uh, that's an, actually a more prudent conversation. And the anger is real. It's not emotional. It's not a feeling. It's real. The middle class, the working families in this economy are going backwards. And they have been going backwards for years. And that's driving the anxiety. That's what it's all about. And it's true. It's not just an emotional feeling. You look at the situation in the middle class today, earning power-wise, they're back where they were 20 years ago. The story of the country is you're supposed to be going forward. People are worried about whether their children are going to do as well as they did. What was at one time a salary that you thought you could live on, 50, 60, 70, 80,000 dollars, you have two kids in college, forget it, wipes out everything. Your home was supposed to be your retirement account, the equity in your home. You have people in homes today that aren't worth what they were seven years ago. So the economy is making more millionaires and billionaires on one hand, but on the other hand, the working families and the middle class are being left behind. And that's what makes it even worse. It's the economy for the lucky and the left out. And it's hard to hear all these great stories of wealth and millionaires when the vast bulk of society is going backwards. That's the problem. And that's what's driving the anger, and that's what they're playing with in politics. But I want to find ways to actually help make the situation better. 
to reduce the anger and address people where they, they are. First is raising the minimum wage. It is a simple, it is math. There is no philosophy, there's no Democrat, Republican, liberal, conservative. FDR passed the minimum wage. Franklin Delano Roosevelt was a great governor of New York, then a great president. The minimum wage was supposed to provide a decent living to people who worked full time. Decent living, why? Because FDR's point was all work is dignified. Whatever you do, it is dignified and it should be honored and it should be respected. And if you work full time, you should have a decent living above the poverty level. Minimum wage in New York is now $9 an hour. We just raised it to nine. But the truth is $9 an hour, $18,000 a year. You cannot support a family in New York, let alone decently. We need to raise the minimum wage. Our proposal is $15, which is about $30,000 a year, which, by the way, does not mean you're going to take a vacation in Florida. But it means you can at least pay for food and clothing, et cetera. And we want to get that done this year. The second issue is paid family leave. And this gets into a different part about this economy. This economy requires you to work all the time. We created uh, over 700,000 new jobs, and the expression is, I know I have three of them. People are working harder than ever before. One job you can't get by. And work, 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 new technology, you're on a Blackberry, you're on a cell phone, it never stops. We need a balance between work and family because life was not just about work. Life was really about family and those connections and community and giving back and living in your community. Uh, and people just don't have enough time to be there with family, either in the good times or the bad times. When a woman has a child, she should be able to stay home and spend time with that baby and bond with that baby. When a man has, is the, has the gift of being a father, he should have the time to stay home and be with that baby. Likewise, on the other end of the spectrum, when you have a loved one who is sick and needs help and needs assistance or is passing, you should be there. You should be there. Those are the times in life that priorities are clear. I just went through this with my father last year. The Reverend and I were chatting upstairs about loss, and we knew we were losing my father. Uh, the good news was we were given some time. Doctor said, you know, it's a matter of weeks. And uh, my father would call, and he would say, you know, pal, if you find some time, maybe you pass by. And I would pass by. And just to be there, there's no purpose, you know, everything had been said, but just to hold a hand, just to smile, just to tell a bad joke, just so he could tell me what I messed up that day and what I messed up the day before and how if he was governor, he would have done a better job than me and <laughs> didn't I learn anything and... What was I just listening to my mother, and I should have listened to him, and go back and read his speeches, and those days were precious days. If I had to do it all over again, I would have been with him every day during that period. And there was always something that was important and the office is calling, this is important, this is important. I don't even remember what I did that was so important at that time. But that's where I should have been. And I kick myself that I wasn't there. Many people, many families don't have the choice. Why? Because the federal law gives you 12 weeks that you can take off to be with a loved one in one of those situations. But the 12 weeks, they don't pay you. So who can really take off 12 weeks 
with no money. And I don't want to be cynical, Congressman, but I think Washington passed the law knowing nobody could use it anyway because nobody can afford to take off 12 weeks. Not your side of the House, Congressman. I was talking about the other side of the House, just so we're clear. I don't want any trouble with the Congressman now. The New York State law says people have a right to take off 12 weeks, and we will pay them to take off the 12 weeks so it's a meaningful decision. This is coming up literally in the next few weeks. Uh, we pass these two laws. We change people's lives. When I came and asked for your support, I said, I don't want to be in government just because I want to be in government. Uh, that doesn't have a thrill for me. Government can be a vehicle to change people's lives and make life better for people who need help. <laughs> government can be a champion for people who have no voice. Government can be a champion for people who don't have the power in society so that left to their own devices, it's the powerful that win. We pass these two laws. It will be direct assistance to the middle class and working families who have been getting the short end of the stick for 20 years in this economy. But I need you. Martin Luther King used to say the arc of the moral universe bends towards justice. It does. Martin Luther King also said it doesn't bend on its own. We must bend it. Every struggle, he said, every fight, he said, takes effort. The good fight is still a fight. And this is a fight because I want to raise the minimum wage. There's a lot of corporations that say, I don't want to pay a higher minimum wage. I want to say paid weeks, 12, uh, 12 weeks paid leave. A lot of corporations say, no, 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 I want my employees staying in the, in the office. I don't want them taking paid leave. So, we have a lot of powerful forces on the other side. What we have on our side is you. We have the people. We have mouths, we have people, we have voices, and we have to make them heard. You speak up, you make a difference, we will get this done, and we'll be the better for it. Thank you, and God bless you, and enjoy your Sunday. <laughs>